Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the latest vlog here on the Gavin Partridge channel. So it can be quite a difficult vlog for me to do because he's talking about my uh, health and, and issues that are going on at the moment related to cancer. So uh, so yeah, quite a, quite a significant uh, video of this, quite a significant vlog. And um, uh, if you're interested in that, then please stick around and, and, uh, and watch it and I'll talk you through what's going on at the moment uh, with me. Uh, just so you're enjoying the vlogs on the channel, then please can you uh, like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. So, this is all related to a white patch uh, that I had um, 10 years ago on the side of my tongue, on the right-hand side towards the back, it wisdom teeth. I had a white patch uh, 10 years ago, so around 2009, 2010. Um, and by sort of 2012-13, it had uh, transformed into uh, not only a white patch, but also into dysplasia. Dysplasia is... Uh, uh, pre-cancerous potential so dysplasia is graded as uh as mild moderate or severe i have moderate dysplasia i've done a video about this I did a video in 2020 talking about you can find it here on the channel by going to the videos tab and you'll be able to uh to watch that if you, if you want to know more so um i had a pre-cancerous lesion it was uh lasered off through laser ablation by my uh lovely surgeon mr amorelli mr amorelli uh, lazy it off uh, on the 30th of April 2013 and since I've been generally fine uh, actually so uh, it all settled down very nicely after the operation get rid of this white patch with uh, with uh, pre -can you know cancer potential precancerous uh, white patch it settled down very nicely but a few months ago I got an ulcer that uh, actually erupted on the side of my tongue. Uh, I have this, and I will show you it in a moment. Uh, actually, if I want to see it, I'll, I'll let have a quick look at it. Um, might not want to look into into Gal's mouth, but, but if anybody does, then, then they can see it uh, a little bit later on in the video. But um, but yeah, it erupted into this uh, sore ulcer type uh, thing. A few months ago, and uh, and this should just look like a fungus that you scrape off, but underneath it was a little bit sore. Um, but it gradually transformed and became much more ulcerated by sort of the end of last year, it was looking rather ulcerated. So, um, I knew it wasn't right, I knew it had got to be checked because it's in high risk area anyway, because it's the same place where I had the dysplasia. So, uh, in January, I uh went to see my doctor, you know, Mr. Alvarado, you just mentioned it. Um, I went to see him, uh, in, in a private hospital. I could have had a refer from a dentist or from a GP, but I, I wasn't sure whether I would be able to still see him. You know, I might have been transferred on to another specialist um, at Northampton General Hospital. I didn't know, wasn't sure, but I definitely wanted to go back to Mr. Howard Rally, who I'd seen uh, before. He's one of the best head and neck maxofacial uh, surgeons, you know, in the country. He's got a really, really fabulous uh, um, uh, reputation. You know, he's really good at what he does. And got a, he's a lovely, lovely man as well. You know, he's, 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 he's a really, really nice man. And and uh, I wanted to carry on with him. And I've got, you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, rich but i've got quite a bit of money so uh but i've earned free gas worthy so so i used some of that to, to pay for a private appointment uh with him in uh january and uh and he looked at it you know at the private hospital and, and he said that um you know it's, it looks suspicious uh definitely and it's gonna be biopsied and um and also gotta have a ct scan of my head neck and chest as well and uh, very quickly he transferred me back from the private hospital to, to the National Health Service, you know, to the Vagent Hospital, but c to carry on with him. So he referred me to himself, <laughs> kind of thing. A little bit of an unusual situation, but but uh, so so we got to the General Hospital. And uh, and then, of course, uh, there were lots of other things going on. So uh, my mum, Mr. P, been really unwell, as everybody knows, who's been watching the weather videos. Um, so, so that delayed things a little bit. Um, also had COVID. COVID was the main delay, actually, in getting the biopsy done because we had to go into uh, isolation for 10 days. And even then, you can't really go into hospital and have tests if you're still testing positive. So even after 10 days, uh, for a couple of days, two or three days, I was still testing positive on the actual flow test thing. Uh, I was still getting the dreaded two lines rather than the dreaded one, rather, rather than the one line, if you see what I mean. So that delayed things even more until I was negative uh, and, and uh, it was all a bit of a nightmare really but eventually I did manage to get the uh, get the, the biopsy and the CT scan done and we have got the results. I've had the results uh, back this week and it turns out that this, uh, this uh, ulcer on the side of my tongue is actually a stage one 
uh, tongue cancer, mouth cancer, oral cancer. It's a stage one squamous cell carcinoma of the tongue, a mouth. Uh, so Gav has cancer. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm quite shocked about that, although I have had a while to get to prepare myself because it's been coming up for a while. I haven't really spoken about it a great deal, but it's been coming for a while. So I am sort of prepared, but I appreciate it's like quite a shock uh, for, for everybody, you know, to, 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 to hear that news. Uh, the, the Gav, Gav the weatherman, uh, you know, uh, Gav has cancer. So, so uh, if it is a shock, if it is a shock for you, then I'm, you know, really sorry uh, about that. And, uh, and uh, I just wanted, you know, I'd just like to be open and honest about what's going on. So, so, um, so yeah, I've got cancer. It's stage one. I've been quite positive, considering it's like a diagnosis of cancer. I've actually been quite positive about it, to be honest. So, uh, we've talked about the treatment. I've talk, spoken to Mr. Amorelli about the treatment I'm going to have to have uh, to remove this. And I am going to have to have an operation, definitely. Um, the operation will be, uh, there'll be two parts of the operation. I'll talk about part, um, part two of the operation in a moment. And when I say stage one, it's not definitive, but it's stage one. It may, in, it may increase from stage one. More about that in a second. But the first part of the operation is going to be to, uh, to get rid of the, um, cancer on the tongue. Um, now, this can be a very big operation if you're further on in the cancer scale. So sometimes if you have like an oral cancer or a tongue cancer, they will uh, do a cut to the arm, maybe the leg, but it's often the arm, they'll do a cut to the arm, they'll take an area of tissue from the arm and transfer that, graft that onto the tongue to replace the area of tongue that they have removed. It's remarkable how they do it, but of course, if you have that, you're always going to have quite a significant speech deficit. You'll have, always have quite a uh, significant significant speech, um, you know, issue if, if, you, if you've had, like, the graph taken from your arm, put into your tongue. Um, it gives you a functional tongue, but you're never going to sound as good as you did when you had your full tongue. Luckily for me, because this is only, an, uh, this is only a small, early stage one cancer, as far as we know, Luckily for me, I don't have to have that. They'll just remove the the lesion, and they will be, there'll be enough tongue left to be able to uh, stitch it back together. If you see what I mean, and and I'll be relatively sounding uh, as I am. I may get like a, for, certainly for the first few weeks, there will be a, an impediment to my speech, and there may be a long term speech impediment as well with this because it is i'm not going to you know give the idea but it's a minor operation it's quite a significant operation this but not as significant as it could have been if i was having to have the full graph so it's somewhere in between it's in between if like it could leave you with a long-term speech impediment but um if it is it should only be after a few weeks it should only be relatively minor and i shouldn't sound all that much different from how I do now. Fingers crossed that, that goes okay. So as far as the tongue is concerned, uh, I should be left with a fully functional sort of tongue. I should be able to speak and swallow and eat and, you know, do all the things that the tongue does, maybe even... Do a little bit of whistling on the live stream still, hopefully, uh, and all of that. So, so that's fine. The other part of the operation is going to be a cut to the neck that I've got to have. Uh, so I am going to have to have my neck cut and lymph glands removed. Now, this is important for, for staging. Um, on the CT scan, there was no sign of any involvement in the lymph glands in the neck. Because the first place that uh, mouth cancer goes to normally... Of course, everybody's different, so it can occasionally do something a little bit unexpected. But nine times out of ten, the first place that mouth cancer will go to from the mouth will be to the lymph glands in the neck, and then the lymph glands in the neck from there, it spreads probably to the lung. Um, you know, it goes down. So uh, the lymph glands are always very important to, to look at. Uh, on the imaging, on the CT scan, there was absolutely no sign of any cancer within the tongue uh, within the lymph nodes, I should say, whatsoever. So, uh, so uh, on the imaging, it looks okay. But of course, you can get like microscopic cancer cells that the uh, that the imaging won't pick up. Uh, that that have, that have um, you know metastasized and, and gone into the, the lymph nodes. So, as a precaution more than anything else, they like to give a cut, do a cut to the neck, take the lymph glands out, look at them under the microscope, and just make sure that uh, there's no 
spread from the mouth to the neck. Um, and so uh, if we think that it's stage one because there's no sign of any spread to the neck, if there is any traces of uh, cancer within the lymph glands in the neck, that will increase the stage. So it will go from stage one probably to stage two or three or four, I don't know, but it will go up the stage scale. And that will also mean I go up the treatment scale. So at the moment, it looks like I just have an operation and, and that's it. But, of course, if the neck reveals, the neck dissection, if that reveals that there's microscopic cancer cells within the lymph glands, then we start talking about things like radiotherapy, we start talking about things like chemotherapy, and, and they're really nasty treatments. You know, if I have to have them, I have to have them. If you have to have your treatment, you have to have your treatment at the end of the day, because you, you, it's all about saving your life, ultimately with cancer. So so it's possible it's possible that it's not stage one, it's a bigger stage. It's possible that it's not just an operation, it's radiotherapy, maybe chemotherapy as well. So I'm not gonna you know, I'm not gonna put on a, a an idea but, but it's just an operation and we're done. At the moment we think that's all it is, but until we get the histology back, both from the cancer that you take from the tongue and and particularly from the neck uh, dissection, until we get the full histology back, there is a possibility that this might be stage two or more and, and more treatment might be required. I am quite keen, if I can, to avoid radiotherapy, particularly because that is very, very nasty on the head and neck, particularly the mouth, which is a sensitive area. Um, so if I can, you know, I'm just keeping everything, wrong. please everybody keep, Keep everything crossed for me, but I'm able to avoid uh, radio and chemotherapy because I'm not keen on, on on those treatments at all. I just want to get out of this with uh, with an operation, hopefully, and hopefully that's all it's going to take. But uh, but until we get the full histology back and uh, and we know you know how the lymph glands are looking in the neck, there's a possibility more treatment if this might be required. However, I don't want to also be pessimistic. So at the moment, it's you know for to be told you've got. Cancer, Cancer, it's relatively good news. It's I mean. Now, I am going to have this cut on the neck, uh, which will probably be quite visible, I would have thought, particularly initially. I do try to keep it within the folds of, of the neck. Um, so they try to hide it a little bit. But early on, you know, uh, after a year or two, it settles down, probably fades a bit. But early on, it will be quite noticeable, I would have thought, on the end, particularly if I'm sort of unbuttoned. Well, I'm not going to be unbuttoned because I'm too old. Gav's too old for unbuttoning a shirt now. Um, but, uh, no, um, uh, you know, it, it, it'll probably be quite noticeable that I've got this. But uh, otherwise, I'm feeling quite positive. So that's, like, all you'll see, really, in terms of, of, of like, how I look outside. Otherwise, it shouldn't really ch change my appearance a great deal. When you have the neck dissection, it can cause, um, uh, it can cause a bit of weakness in the shoulder, so I might have to have a bit of physiotherapy to boost that. You can also get a little, I didn't know this, but apparently you can also get a little bit of weakness on the side of your mouth, so I might get a lopsided smile. Normally it gets better over time, you know, it normally improves over time, but it can you know, disrupt the nerves uh, that, are, that are going up and also going down, and, uh, and so I'm, for a while I might have a bit of a lopsided smile, so I might, you know, be a bit crooked. I smile a little bit like that. But otherwise, there shouldn't be much to be seen uh, in, in terms of treatment that I'm going to have if it is just an operation. Obviously, if I have to have radiotherapy to the head and neck, then then a burn will start to appear and, and, and so on. So I'll be taking a bit of time off. Uh, I'm going to try and do so after I come out of hospital, after the operation, I will try and do uh, a couple of vlogs here on the channel just to chart how I'm doing. But on the weather channel, on Gaz Weather Vids, I'll, I will t have to take a couple of weeks off, I think. I was going to take like a month off this spring anyway, so I suppose that's going to coincide with that, probably. And uh, so I'll disappear for a while on the weather channel, but I'll keep uploading not long videos, you know, just short videos, letting everybody know how I'm doing and you can hear how I'm, how I'm sounding and, and whatnot here on, on on the vlog. Now, I did certainly have a look at Miss Cancer, so if you're squeamish, just look away now or push the video on a little bit. If you want to see what oral cancer, what tongue cancer, what mouth cancer looks like, then here we go. This is what it looks on me. Anyway, it can look very different, you know, but it's different. But this is how tongue cancer, mouth cancer, uh, squamous cell carcinoma looks on me. Uh...
just now. That is my uh, small, as far as we know, stage one uh tongue cancer mouth cancer so uh so yeah and it just highlights again the fact that if you have any suspicious lesions in the mouth they need to be checked uh you know you don't have to be high risk you don't have to be smoking and um you know drinking really heavily and and all of the risk factors we associate with mouth cancer that increase your potential to get mouth cancer but you don't have to have those risk factors to still have uh um, uh, you know, a risk of mouth cancer, and, you know, I'm proof of that. So, again, it just highlights that you have any ulcers, any uh, any sores, any white or red patches, or red and white patches in the mouth, um, you know, get them checked out as quick as you can if they don't heal after a couple of weeks or a month, and, uh, and make sure make sure you see a dentist and then get a referral on to on to a, ma a maxofacial specialist and and get it biopsied and, and get it looked at um and yeah so that's it so gath has cancer uh and it's uh, it's a combination of what's been a rotten 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 2022 so far mrs p my mum has been really really unwell as well which i'm sure you all know about and i can't go into you know what's what's been going on with her because it's her medical um you know, her medical stuff. So I don't want to be uh, getting that out all over the internet. You see what I mean? But she has been very, very unwell, and she continues to be uh, really quite poorly as well. And then we've had so many other things going on. As I said, I've had COVID. Uh, I've had uh, a dental abscess this week. I had to have a tooth removed uh, as well. So <laughs> you name it. It's just one of those times. It's coming from all directions. Uh, and I think, you know, a lot of people go through these times where you're sailing along and you think everything going okay and then suddenly the whole world falls in on you and everything starts coming at you from all directions and I think everybody has that at uh, various points in their life you have your good times, you have your bad times, don't you but uh, the difference with me is that I'm sort of in the public eye slightly through what I do on YouTube so so when I go through a bad time people notice and, um, and, uh, and so I would like to be as open and as transparent and as honest about what's going on uh, as I can be and so I I wanted to do this video just to let everybody know that I'm fine, you know, I'm okay, uh, but I have got something that needs treating, and it needs treating quickly, so I assume, I think the operation could be happening by the end of March, probably, um, and uh, certainly end of March, early April, I think, so So it's not going to take all that long before I have to have the op, and, uh, and I disappear off the scene, and then, of course, we will see after that how the histology looks and whether any further treatment is required. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed so much that... Um, but uh, but no more treatment will be required for this. But but we'll have to wait and see. You know, we'll have to wait and see. And if more treatment is required, then more treatment is required. You have to you have to do what what you have to do. You have to, I have to do what Mr. Amorali tells me. You know, he's the boss. Uh, Mr. Amorali is the boss, and and that's it. So if he says more treatment, then it'll be more treatment. If he, he says that's all I need, then then that's all I need. Um, so we'll just see how how that goes. Um, I did make an announcement. I appreciate this is going to be a shock for anybody who hasn't uh, checked out Gas over social media accounts, Twitter, Facebook, Discord. Um, you know, I appreciate this will be a shock. Uh, so I'm so sorry. Sorry about that, but I, but I say I'd like to be as open as I can be about things. Um, so, so if it is a shot, then then I, I'm really sorry that that's happened. Um, but uh, I did make the announcement on the social media channels uh, yesterday, and uh, thank you so much to all of you for all of your lovely, lovely messages. I there are far too many for me to be able to reply to each and every one, but I have seen all of them. Please know that I have seen each and every one of your messages, and and I'm always blown away. You know, I'm always absolutely blown away by the, by the way you you're so kind to me uh, and, and and Mrs P and and, and and my family. You know, you you're always absolutely lovely. Uh, so I just want to say thank you so much. You know, thank you so much for all of those incredibly kind messages, and they do help. You know, they help a lot to to spur you on and make you determined to to to, to fight this. And we're going to fight this together. I'm going to fight this, uh, and and you're going to help me fight this as well. So so we're going to beat cancer together. Let's do it, shall we? We're going to raise our fists uh, to cancer, and we're going to beat cancer together, and we'll get through this uh, as we always do as a community. Uh, 
like the Gasworth community, um, and like Gavin Partridge Channel is an offshoot of, of Gasworth, of course. So, um, you know, the, the community is going to fight cancer and, and we're going to give it. I'm sure we will. We'll give it. Uh, and hopefully after the operation, I'll still be able to do my Gabba team. I give it. I'm sure I will. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, but you see, I'm OK. You know, uh, I'm not I'm not falling to pieces and so on. When I got the diagnosis, it's very strange because when I got the diagnosis or actually before the diagnosis, when I had like the pre-cancerous thing going on in 2013, I absolutely fell apart with that. And I, I was really, really terrible uh, with that for a few weeks. I just I was on my last legs. I was going to lose my tongue. You know, I, I was absolutely terrible. I, I was a nervous wreck and I fell apart. I almost had a breakdown, I think, over it, actually. Uh, and I didn't have cancer. This time I have actually got cancer and I'm not feeling too bad. I'm feeling pretty positive, actually, about it. Probably because I know but it could have been so much worse because it had been quite a lot of delays going on in getting the diagnosis. Um, you know, it's been it's been a while. Uh, so, so it could have been a lot worse when he said it's, we think it's stage one, but we can't confirm until we do the CT scan. Um, no, we can't confirm until we do the neck dissection, but from the CT scan, we think it's stage one. You know, um, I was, I was quite relieved, uh, because I was thinking, you know, how much time has gone on, how many delays we've had. We could be talking about stage two, stage three, uh, in the neck, maybe stage, stage four even, I don't know. But I was thinking it could be a lot worse than stage one. So to be honest, I'm feeling quite positive, uh, about this. Um, for a diagnosis of cancer, obviously it's worrying, but but for a diagnosis of cancer, I'm actually feeling pretty positive, and, uh, and you see that I'm I'm fine. Uh, but but treatment is coming, and uh, and so I will keep everybody informed. You know when when that treatment is going to start, and uh, and and we shall see. You know we'll see see what happens and, and where we go with it. But uh, but yeah, you know uh, uh, that's that's what's happening. So I just want to let everybody know a but I'm okay, I'm fine uh, in myself, you know, I've not, not had a breakdown this time, uh, like I did in 2013, and B, you know, just wanted to raise awareness and let everybody know uh, what's going on, and once again, just to emphasise, if you have any ulcers, any sores, any white or red or red and white patches in the mouth that don't heal after a couple of weeks or, or, or the very latest a month, uh, then, then get them checked, even if you're not in high risk for risk factors, get them checked and biopsy and, uh, and make sure they're, they're, they're nothing too, too serious. Um, so raising awareness was an important part of this video as well. People will probably find this through YouTube search and uh, will maybe go on the journey with me. There will be further videos appearing on the vlog charting my journey through this um, wherever it ends and hopefully it will end with a full recovery and uh and and uh and you know that will be the end of it hopefully fingers crossed keep your fingers crossed big gap please everybody i know you will right uh so that's it let me know in the comments uh what you think please uh everyone i'm sure you know people will be shocked about it and if you are then i'm very very sorry about that uh but uh, but please let me know in the comments uh what you think and uh yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna beat cancer together and uh, I'm up for it as you can tell I'm up for it and, uh, and I hope you're up for it as well we're going to go on the journey together and uh, we're going to we're going to kick cancer's butt I can tell you that Right, okay, uh, so thank you so much everybody, and uh, been a long video, it's 24 minutes, blimey. Uh, right, so thank you so much everybody, that's it then. So, um, so yeah, I'll keep you informed, and uh, thank you so much for watching, bye for now.